This is like speed dating. We have 30 minute sessions, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Let me begin and open us in prayer. Father, we come to you as your followers, as disciples. Uh, we're on a journey of loving you and surrendering our lives to you. Uh, thank you for your presence as we meet. I uh, pray that your spirit would open hearts and minds to each of us to follow you even more with the whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, turn this on. So here is the scope of what we're doing. Ah, that's it. All right, so this is a three-parter, and you're here at part one. And the, the whole series of these three sessions is taken from Matthew 4.19, where Jesus said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And I want to read just uh, the verses around that so you have a chance to see what the context is. <clears throat> so here's Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then he said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them immediately. They left the boat, they left their father, and they followed Jesus. What an invitation for Jesus to say, come follow me. And he did this in community. He did this with brothers. One set of brothers, another set of brothers. And that's important as we see how Jesus calls us and what he calls us to. So our first seminar will be about being a disciple of Jesus. The second one will be about growing and deepening my walk with Christ as a disciple. The third one will be about committed to the mission of Jesus, making disciples. So follows, follow me, I will make you and fishers of men. So you could sort of see this as a cycle, going from deepening my walk with God, joining him in his purpose and the purpose of Jesus and what he called us to, and growing deeper in my walk with him, from following Jesus, being transformed and changed by Jesus, and committed to the mission of Jesus. This whole idea of disciple, learner, follower, in the Greek, it's this word, uh, mathetes. So it talks about a rabbi and learner. It talks about a rabbi providing context and teaching and life on life, and it's a learner. So the disciples went from Galilee to Jerusalem. As I read through the Gospels, I actually mapped this out. How many times they went from Galilee to Jerusalem, about 90 miles, maybe that takes three, four days to walk. This is like man camp on steroids. They walked with Jesus, they, they, they gathered firewood, they cooked, they fished, they talked, they kicked each other in the night, sleeping under the same canvas, who knew? But they did everything with Jesus. They were a learner, a follower, committed to time with him. So we could track that language this way. Follow Jesus, being a disciple, a follower. Changed by Jesus, growing as a disciple. Committed to the mission of Jesus, making disciples. So I track kind of where we're going with this little arrows across the top. We'll talk about goals. I have an image of seesaw. And then we'll talk about knowing Jesus. We'll talk about loving Jesus, obeying Jesus, and a little bit about how. He's already said the goal is about deepening our love relationship with Christ. That's where it begins. And that's what has to sustain us in our walk with Christ. And this verse from Paul speaks to a change of being crucified with Christ. And my life is changed. No longer do I live for myself, but I live for Christ. So these words of follower, disciple, each one of you as a believer in Christ is a disciple. We are all on a journey. The journey is not perfection, but it's progress in growing in Christ likeness. It's not a destination, it's a direction. We're on a journey. So what's the heart of the matter? If you walk with Christ for a while, things can get complicated. Life happens. You have jobs that happen. You have jobs that don't happen. People with job loss. You have COVID, not COVID. You have kids and family 
life happens and we could get complicated and lose our heart and love and our walk with Christ, it becomes shouted out by the things of life around us. The heart of the matter is to develop and hold on to and be sustained by our love relationship with Christ. He invites us, come and follow me. That's what sustains us in our walk with him. So I have this kind of seesaw. So following Jesus, the fulcrum is about knowing Jesus, rightly knowing who God is, who Jesus is, who I am in Christ. And it's about loving Jesus like in, in being and doing, this continuum, being and doing, this seesaw of our following Jesus. So there's loving Jesus in the being, and then there's the doing. And how do I balance those in my walk with Christ? We think about extremes. So what if my extreme is I, I, I walk with Jesus daily, I'm developing my love for Jesus, I don't have to you know, be at church and fellowship, I don't have to be in the Word, I don't have to spend, I just sort of love Jesus in the depth of my being. And so that, that's an incorrect balance if you fall to that extreme of not balancing with doing with our being in Christ. And if it tips the other way, well, I've got my checklist, I, I make sure I do this, and I, I read, and I memorize, and I study, and I share Christ, and I do these other things, but my heart is kind of cold, it becomes a checklist. It becomes a list of do's and don'ts, and I measure my walk with Christ by this checklist, and that's, that's out of balance as well, because we tip it to more of a, a checklist of activity and not growing in my love relationship with Christ. So we need this balance. It's and. It's not one or the other. So we'll look at knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, and obeying Jesus. And in these few minutes, I want you to see what a heart growing in Christ is like. This is what I hope my heart continues to grow like. And I go through ups and downs in my coldness of my heart, my warmth of my heart toward Christ. So this is for each one of us on our journey. So what about knowing Jesus? Interesting enough, here in Paul, he talks about how the enemy deceives us. And he takes us away from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. On one hand, it's quite simple. Just give my whole life to Jesus. It's not simplistic. But the message is quite simple. The simplicity of devotion to Christ. Don't lose that devotion and simplicity of pursuit of Christ. Jesus said, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. That is the core essence of our salvation and our whole Christian life, is knowing God. So here's a way of thinking about God's whole character. Culture will tell you something completely different, but just listening to a podcast, Al Mohler, that was just talking about some New York Times article that spoke to God is getting more liberal. And of course, he just went ballistic with that uh, in print. And it's like, God is the same today, yesterday, always. It's our society, it's our interpretation of the religions are getting liberal. God is not. So we see God's character of being holy. And these verses, you can't read them from afar, so they're kind of my tickler here. But scripture speaks of God as holy. And it speaks of these two balancing parts of God's nature. Completely righteous and completely just. Sin cannot be in his presence. He is holy God. He is other. He requires justice and righteousness. Justice for sin and righteousness in his presence. On the other hand, he is completely in perfect love. Now, people want to separate that. The Old Testament is all about God's judgment. The New Testament is all about God's love. We see equally God's justice and love in the Old Testament. We see it equally in the New Testament. What reconciles God's demand for justice and God's perfect love for us is, of course, Jesus. For it says in Romans, Verse 4, particularly, the righteousness of God and the requirement of the law is fulfilled in Jesus. His substitutionary death on the cross, paying the penalty, the requirement of the law of sin, and the love of God are brought together in the person of Jesus. Fall in love with that person of Jesus.
pursue the reconciler of Jesus. That God's nature hasn't changed. Jesus brought those together in his death on the cross in salvation. So I'm going to cover a little bit from John 1, from Colossians 1, from Hebrews 1. And I've, I've kind of put in bubbles some key phrases. What I want you to do is kind of let these wash over you as we think about being following Jesus and knowing him, to know his character, to see who he is. And then in Ephesians 1, to see who I am in Christ. This is part of our balance of knowing God and being a follower of Jesus. It has to begin with the heart. It has to be sustained by the heart. So John 1, so even if you want to just kind of space out a little bit and listen, listen to how wonderful these words are. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Word was God. Jesus is creator. Jesus is life. Jesus is light. Jesus is the image of God. He's above creation. He is creator. He's above all rulers and authorities. He is the sustainer of all things. By the word of his power, he sustains all things. He is the head of the church. He's preeminent and firstborn above all things. He is fully God. He is reconciler. Jesus is peacemaker. He is the voice of God spoken to us. He is the Son of God. He is the heir of all things. Jesus as creator. He's the radiance of the glory of God. He is the imprint of the nature of God. His word sustains all things. He is the purifier of sin. He sits at the right hand of God in heaven. He is above all angels. Hebrew says he's above Moses. He's above the law. He's above the sacrifice. He's above the temple. That's the Jesus whom we follow. Follow the simplicity of devotion to who Jesus is. And in Christ, he says we are blessed in Christ. We have every spiritual blessing in Christ. We're chosen in Christ, holy and blameless in Christ, predestined for adoption in Christ. His grace is a blessing. He redeems us in Christ, forgives our sins. His grace is lavished, lavished upon us. I get this idea of just the waves of God's grace continuing to pound on the shore of my heart that gets cold, my heart that can sometimes walk away. It's God's grace that continues to come. He's obtained an inheritance. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. That's the Jesus that we follow. That is our identity. So let's move next from knowing Jesus to loving Jesus. What is that about? This being and doing. How do I bring those in balance? So we see the Old Testament. Moses wrote in Deuteronomy 6, which known as the Shema. Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel. This was prayed every day. As the, as the individuals, the family, as a whole nation, they would pray this. Hear, O Israel. And these will be familiar words to you. Where he says, love God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. These words which I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. Be consumed with the idea of loving God. And it takes my whole being, my heart, my thoughts, my my body, my actions, my whole being is consumed with loving God. Make that first. This was so important. Jesus said it's the greatest commandment. Right? When the, when the guy challenged Jesus, tell me what the commands are and, and which one, thinking of the Ten Commandments and the law, and Jesus blew up the whole culture by saying, you know it. It's Deuteronomy 6. To love God. The life of worship where Paul says, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So in this being, it's about being consumed and developing my passion and love for Christ and let it invade every area of my life. So this loving Jesus. Let's look at the other end, this idea of obeying Jesus. 
It's interesting what Jesus says here. He brings together obedience and love relationship with him in the same words, in the same phrase. This is obedience from joy. John 14, 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. Well, did you see that? Whoever has my commandments is he who loves me. And what happens? I will be loved by my Father. I will love him and manifest myself to him. If you want to know Jesus more, obey his commandments. They happen in the same way. Loving God, loving Christ, obeying Christ in the same way. First John, he says, this is the love of God. We keep his commandments. They're not burdensome. They're not a checklist. They're not a duty. They're not shame. They're not guilt. They're a joy to walk with Jesus. Obey his commandments from the heart, overflowing in love because of who he is that we look at, because of all we are in Christ that we look at. Obeying Jesus. Paul puts it this way. He says, if you're in Christ, you are being transformed. You're being made into a new creature. And so what's that about? It's, he describes this as clothing. I'm going to take off the old. I'm going to put on the new. We still are in a fallen world. Our flesh it still has its flesh nature. The enemy knows what to trip us up in with temptation and with accusation and with lies. We can still walk in different ways in the flesh. We're called to walk in the spirit. So Paul describes this in, a, in an everyday way. Take off the old clothing. Put on the new clothing. And he, he says it's in corruption. It's in deceitful desires. Jeremiah talks about the heart is more deceitful than all else. And is desperately sick. Who can know the heart but the Lord God? Many times we walk with God about, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't feel right. Or I'm, I just don't feel this today, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to, to be in scripture or be in fellowship with others or pray because I'm, I'm not feeling it today. It's just not real and authentic. Jesus calls us to obey out of love. He doesn't call us to wait for the feeling. To be there. Our culture is one of, if I don't feel it, I'm not doing it. That is a complete lie of the enemy. Sure, I have up days and down days. Yes, there are days I don't feel it. You know, so, all right, busy stuff happens. I mean, you know, I skip a day or so, but then I tell myself, you know, I, I'm not feeling it yesterday, today, tomorrow, this week, next week, this month, next month, and all of a sudden I've gone weeks and months without being before God in scripture and prayer. And my heart is empty and cold and I'm wondering why my Christian life doesn't work <laughs> and it's lacking joy. So he says, take off the old, put on the new. It's in the likeness of God that it's been created righteous and holy. You can't read this, but Colossians speaks about the old self. Here's all these internal heart issues of the old self. Passion, sexual morality, evil desires, covetousness, adultery, they come out in wrath, anger, malice, slander, obscene talk, lying. He says the inside, the internal, is renewed. It's the image of God. It's chosen. It's holy. It's beloved. And it should show. It should come out in my outer clothing of compassion and kindness and humility in meekness and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving, loving one another. Notice that the transformation is from the heart to the outside. It has to happen in that way. Behavior management doesn't work. And men, you, you know what this is like. We all have some of our addictions. We have our go-to sins that the enemy keeps popping at us. And we keep trying to behavior management, and it doesn't work. The transformation has to come from the heart by how God works in us, by his Holy Spirit and the Word. So we take off the old, we put on the new. So how we change. So I get this idea of balancing loving God, obeying God, about knowing who God is. How do I incorporate that in my life? This is how this happens. These three are all absolutely necessary in your life. We need to walk with God in the Word of God. 
We need to depend upon the Spirit of God, and we need to be doing that with the people of God. So why are each of these important? We see in Scripture where Deuteronomy, Moses says, Scripture, the law, it's not an idle word for you, but it is your life. And, and this is the law. <laughs> this is the Old Testament law. And we have the beauty of the New Testament, the complete scripture. He says it's not an idle word. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's your life. The word of God. Mm -hmm. Paul speaks to it as, as God breathed. It, this is the words of God. It's profitable for all these things in my life. For teaching, correction, when I fall astray. For reproof, for training in righteousness. The Spirit of God is, is how transformation happens. The Spirit of God changes us from the inside to the outside. It's the Spirit of God that brings the, the, the fruits of the Spirit and brings the gifts of the Spirit and changes my mind and my heart to follow Him. And we, we do that not as Lone Ranger Christians. We do that in the body of Christ. I need you. You need me. We need one another. Because some of these things take accountability and pursuit. I'm learning from you about your passion for Christ and following him. Maybe you might learn from me. We learn from one another. We don't do it as lone believers. And then we don't like being in authentic conversation with other men. It's a hard thing to do. But it's necessary. And a little bit more on that in the next 30-minute spot. So our actions are indeed to do. So what happens when you're out of balance with this? So what happens if one of these are missing? So say that you're, uh, you're in the Word of God, and you're, you're walking in Scripture, and you're in the people of God, you're enjoying some fellowship and community, but you're not depending upon the Spirit of God, you're not in prayer, you're not surrendering and depending upon the Spirit. You, you have no, no power, no gas in the engine. You're learning head knowledge, you're having fun with other believers, but there's no heart transformation happening. We need to walk in the Spirit of God in prayer, dependence, and surrender, depending upon His change in my life. So what if we switch that around? What if um, we have the Word of God, the Spirit of God, but not the people of God? I'm in the Word, I'm in, I'm in prayer, Jesus and I are like this, and, uh, and I'm just good. I, I don't need to be in men's group authentic. I don't need to be in accountability and stuff. I'm, I'm good in the way that I, it's hard. I'm an introvert. It's like it's not something that I easily do. We can easily be led astray by our head knowledge and by our feelings. I had one couple tell me, you know, God, God has told me, they've been having difficulties for quite some time. God's told me that I should just go ahead and divorce my husband. That's what God told me. It was all I could do not to hit the roof at that point. It's like, you're, you haven't been around believers to help you know the truth of God and the Spirit of God. You've been just in isolation, depending upon your head knowledge and your feelings to guide. We need one another. The body of Christ needs one another. What if you trip it the other way? What if you say the Spirit of God and the people of God but not the Word of God. So in the Spirit of God, it's like I'm, I'm walking in the Spirit, I'm praying, and I'm in fellowship with others. You know, Scripture is kind of like a hard thing. I'm just listening to the Spirit. I'm, I'm really not deep in the Scripture to do that. But what happens in that era is I can completely be led astray, not knowing the truth of God, not knowing the character of God, the holiness and righteousness of God, not knowing and understanding the person of Jesus. It's just all by my feelings and by my fun. It comes down to feelings and fun if I'm not in the Word of God. So we need all those. All three are absolutely essential in our following of Jesus. So it wraps up this way. About the focus on the life of worship. The focus on knowing Christ, balancing this idea of deeply walking in Scripture to know who He is, to see who I am, to recognize my deep need for God's grace in my life every day. It's about being consumed with loving Jesus with all my being, all my heart, and my soul, and in obeying Christ out of love. 
to be following him. And the commands that he gives are to transform us by the Holy Spirit. It's about putting off that old self and putting on the new self. These are all life journeys in our transformation in Christ. We never stop being a follower of Jesus. We continue to grow in Christ. How do you do it? You need to be in the Word deeply. You need to be guided by, depending, surrendering, praying, listening to the Holy Spirit. You need to be in community with others in deep relationship because we need one another. And that's the beginning of this series. What I wish for you in that is to hold on the simplicity of devotion to Christ. To pursue God hard in developing the love relationship with Christ. Not being consumed by the complication of the world. Sometimes the complication of church life can also complicate things. But hold on to that simplicity of knowing Jesus. This is rapid dating. This is your first 30 minutes. <laughs> If you want to look more at how do I actually grow and embed myself in these things, that's the next one. And then the mission of Jesus will be the third one. So we're right on time. I will close and hang around here a little bit. If you want to ask some questions, that would be great. I'll pray. Father, we are grateful that it is, it is you in Christ that has invited us to follow. Each one of us has that invitation of Jesus to follow me, to follow me. Cause us with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength to pursue Jesus with passion from our whole life, our whole being, our whole body, our whole mind, our whole heart. Cause us to come to you in confession and repentance with our coldness of heart and life and our sin to walk with Jesus afresh, even starting today. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you, gentlemen, and 15 minutes, we'll go on to step two.